Chapter 19 The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Here is another ritual law required by the Lord. Tell the people of Israel to bring you a red heifer that has no physical defects and has never been yoked to a plow. Give it to Eleazar the priest, and it will be taken outside the camp and slaughtered in his presence. Eleazar will take some of its blood on his finger and sprinkle it seven times toward the front of the tabernacle. As Eleazar watches, the heifer must be burned, its hide, meat, blood, and dung. Eleazar the priest must then take cedar wood, a hyssop branch, and scarlet thread and throw them into the fire where the heifer is burning. Then the priest must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Afterward he may return to the camp, though he will remain ceremonially unclean until evening. The man who burns the animal must also wash his clothes and bathe in water, and he too will remain unclean until evening. Then someone who was ceremonially clean will gather up the ashes of the heifer and place them in a purified place outside the camp. They will be kept there for the people of Israel to use in the water for the purification ceremony. This ceremony is performed for the removal of sin. The man who gathers up the ashes of the heifer must also wash his clothes, and he will remain ceremonially unclean until evening. This is a permanent law for the people of Israel and any foreigners who live among them. All those who touch a dead human body will be ceremonially unclean for seven days. They must purify themselves on the third and seventh days with the water of purification, then they will be purified. But if they do not do this on the third and seventh days, they will continue to be unclean even after the seventh day. All those who touch a dead body and do not purify themselves in the proper way defile the Lord's tabernacle and will be cut off from the community of Israel. Since the water of purification was not sprinkled on them, their defilement continues. This is the ritual law that applies when someone dies in a tent. Those who enter that tent and those who were inside when the death occurred will be ceremonially unclean for seven days. Any container in the tent that was not covered with a lid is also defiled. And if someone outdoors touches the corpse of someone who was killed with a sword or who died a natural death, or if someone touches a human bone or a grave, that person will be unclean for seven days. To remove the defilement, put some of the ashes from the burnt purification offering in a jar and pour fresh water over them. Then someone who is ceremonially clean must take a hyssop branch and dip it into the water. That person must sprinkle the water on the tent, on all the furnishings in the tent, and on anyone who was in the tent or anyone who has touched a human bone or has touched a person who was killed or who died naturally or has touched a grave. On the third and seventh days, the ceremonially clean person must sprinkle the water on those who are unclean. Then on the seventh day, the people being cleansed must wash their clothes and bathe themselves, and that evening they will be cleansed of their defilement. But those who become defiled and do not purify themselves will be cut off from the community, for they have defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. Since the water of purification has not been sprinkled on them, they remain defiled. This is a permanent law. Those who sprinkle the water of purification must afterward wash their clothes, and anyone who touches the water of purification will remain defiled until evening. Anything and anyone that a defiled person touches will be ceremonially defiled until evening.